please. Raj. Look, that kid was a killer, all right? That wasn't a tinker toy in his hand. That was a machine pistol with twin copies and all the trimmings, man. He would have drilled you, me, anybody that came along, all right? You have no choice. But it didn't happen to you, this. It happened to me. It happened to me. Look, I, I, I kill that kid. I kill that boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, you kill a lot of people. You kill a fucking lot of people. <laughs> you don't kill a baby. You got eyes in your face. You don't kill a, a boy like Nick. You selfish bastard. You selfish bastard. You're just thinking about yourself, Captain. What about me? Huh? We're partners. We're partners. What happens to you happens to me. After all the shit we've been through, don't you get it? Don't you get it? When you retire, you're not just retiring you, you're retiring us. You retire on us. It's not my problem. Yes, it is. It's not my problem. You're the only family I got. I got three beautiful kids. I love them. They're yours. Trish does my laundry. I live in your icebox. I live in your life. What am I gonna do? What, what, what am I supposed to do? I don't care. Yes, you I don't care. Yes, you I don't care. You don't care. Yes, you don't care. I 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 don't care. What's going on ladies and gents in Cyberland? Coming back to you with another film review and this time we're moving on to the third film of this uh, series of Buddy Cops. said when I watched this I think like the weapon three was probably the last one I saw out of the bunch because I saw four then I went one two three and of course um, this film I felt with one and two the films were were uh, establishing a relationship and kind of I guess you could say conclude uh, finishing up some things that weren't resolved with what happened in the first one Things that were mentioned and in, in open fully in the second one. Third one, I felt they were trying to make a statement, which was a good statement, which had to do with uh, L.A. gangs and, and, you know, kids killing kids and kind of thing and who's supplying them with the weapons and just pretty much trying to stop that. And along the way, uh, we see that Murtaugh is getting ready to retire. Um... He's kind of feeling some type of way about it. I don't think he really wants to do it. But at the same time, he feels like maybe it's the right course where he needs to be now. And Riggs hasn't really voiced his opinion too much. But he's kind of, um, I guess you could say, moving along with it, accepting it. But he just hasn't been vocal. On top of that, Joe Pesci's in here again. So he has his moments. It's great. And they're kind of just trying to kind of crack a case in regards to you know situation where these guns are ending up on the street and being utilized when they should be destroyed on top of that we have the great renee russo who makes her debut and she's pretty much rigs in 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 female version but i also feel like she's probably a little bit more aggressive that it's almost like the way she is is kind of how rigs started out and during the, during the film, they kind of come to where they kind of come to an even playing field with their how they interact with each other and how they actually start to feel about each other, too. Because this is the film where, you know, Riggs ends up having a relationship again. 
after the um, after the second film, and that's that. Now, in regards to other cast of characters, we have cameos from people we've seen before previously. On top of that, the villain is a gentleman named Jack Travis, uh, and I felt he was good. I kind of feel like when I look at the villains for so far up to one, two, and three, I felt he was just as good as the second villain, I would say, but I think Gary Busey was the best for the first film. But then, I don't know. He, he wasn't forgettable. He was just... He was good. Um, as far as the story, the story was good. The action was great. But this one was a lot more emotion behind it. Uh, just in regards to what was going on in the film. How things transpired. And, and it also really peeled back the layers of what type of relationship Riggs and Murtaugh have established at this point in the series. I felt the action was good, if I didn't already just say that. Uh, the intro, uh, the intro for the the song uh, for the movie by Sting, I love that song. That's a great song. That's a that's a really really good song. And I, I don't listen to a lot of stuff by Sting, even though I do like the Police to an extent. The comedy was good. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't as violent as one and two. That's for sure. I felt two was probably the darkest of the of the films. At this point, I think they started to get a little lighthearted a little bit. And I don't think that was because maybe certain people of certain ages were watching the film. I just felt like they just lightened up a little bit. Because the first one was dark, but the second one was even darker. And I felt they probably wanted to just lighten it up a little bit. But it was still entertaining. It's, um, I, I can't even, again, I can't rank the Lethal Weapon films as my favorite, which one's my favorite. I just say I love all four of them. Like, I just look at it as, I look at them as just one big story, like, chapter one through four. And it's not even like, like, I like one more than the other. Like, some films I could do that for Lethal Weapons, I love them all the same. Uh, but my rating is a little different. So for my rating of Lethal Weapon 3, I would give it... I give it four and a half out of five yes sirs. I would give it higher, but I felt maybe the problem with Lethal Weapon 3 was that it was two things. One, you didn't see the family as much, which I kind of missed. I kind of missed seeing uh, Murtaugh's family, but maybe, you know, Richard, the great Richard Donner had his reasons and they felt, you know, whatever they did, they wanted to get to the, the main characters. Kind of felt it would have been nice to see them more in the film. As well as... Actually, I take that back. I think... Matter of fact, no. You saw them a lot more than maybe you saw them in the second film. I take that back. I think my only reason why I wouldn't give it a five is just... Honestly, the villain... He just kind of... And it's not the actor. The actor's a great actor. I've seen him in a bunch of films. I forget his name at the moment. But... Just kind of felt there. And I don't know if it was anything the actor could have done. I just felt like... I think he did a great job. I just felt like... Maybe if they had made the villain maybe darker. The, the story the, the story for that character. I don't know. I just didn't feel like... I, I just felt like 3 was on par with 1 and 2. But not as much as, as good as 1 and 2. I don't know if that makes sense. However... Love it. It's a great buddy cop film. I, I, I always felt Donner has really captured the essence of that with these films. And outside of Bad Boys, I haven't seen it. I can't recall where I've seen it where it's been e anything but that. Now, if one of you guys might have something for me with that. Please let me know. I'll gladly check it out. But when I think of this, the only other thing I think as a spiritual successor is Bad Boys. Um, because of everything that's transpired with 1, 2, and 3. So with that being said, if you watch 1 and 2, watch 3. Because like I said, it's, it's like a big... It's not like, uh, like oh, part... It's not like... It's hard to describe, but it just comes feel like a one big story just cut up in pieces. 
but that makes sense. So that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.